Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and in this episode of GPU Microbenchmarking, we're going to be talking about the basics of inline PCX inside of your CUDA kernels. Uh, right, so, you know, whether we're doing, you know, any kind of microbenchmarking, uh, trying to figure out, you know, what the hardware is actually doing, or if we're trying to write, you know, very high performance code, a lot of times we rely on using uh, inline assembly in order to you know really either squeeze out performance or access things that we can't from a higher level abstraction like CUDA and that's exactly what this um, you know mainly for performance purposes um, and debugging purposes as well the ability to inline uh, some of the virtual ISA uh, aka PTX into um, our CUDA kernels right and so what's the real motivation um, for us if we're trying to understand what the architecture is actually doing well you know, one thing is we like to know how some things work, right? If they're not, you know, explicitly give uh, explicitly given to us by NVIDIA. An example of this is the actual thread block scheduler. And there's this uh, um, there's this great link from a piece of work that looked at, you know, how does the thread block scheduler in the Fermi architecture, which is, you know, quite old now, um, you know, but the overall thought process behind, you know, reverse engineering this is about the same. Uh, we could do this with modern GPUs as well. Right. And so we see that, you know, they go through this process of, you know, how do they actually figure out where, you know, each thread block gets mapped, you know, to the SMs um, and, you know, how they can figure this out through some careful micro benchmarking. Right. So uh, in this episode, we're going to look at the basics of, you know, how we would start with getting this information through, you know, just inline PTX. So, as I said, we can insert some assembly into our uh, CUDA kernels. And so uh, examples of this, we use this, a this ASM statement, this assembler statement, uh, and we can insert arbitrary PTX code. So uh, in this case, we've got some kind of template string, and then we've got, you know, inputs uh, as well as outputs uh, that we can, you know, have. Uh, so in our case, since we're just getting the SM ID, this is actually um, a predefined thing, right? So this uh, we'll use, let's go ahead and open up our example. Uh, called, oh, let's go ahead and go to inline PTX and we'll open up this smid.cu, right? And so there's actually this smid that we can directly use as move instruction, right? So this will give us an unsigned 32-bit value of the smid, right? And we'll move it into some output, um, this output register, right? And uh, we'll just have this unsigned sm, right? And that'll be our smid that we're trying to move out. Right, but we can, like I said, we can add arbitrary, you know, PTX in here. So if we have multiple inputs, we can handle multiple inputs. Um, in this case, we just have a single output, right? So we can just get the output. Now, a lot of times, um, we'll put this volatile, right? This volatile in here with this um, this assembler statement. And the reason for that is we don't want the compiler to think, well, this instruction doesn't make any difference, so we can actually optimize it away. Right, so this volatile, volatile just tells the compiler to step back a little bit and guarantees that this will be put into our um, our output code, right? And so we see we've got a very simple application here, right? So um, we're just going to be launching, you know, in this case, um, I'm running this locally and I just have a, uh, a 1050 Ti locally. Um, uh, at the lab, I've got you know access to you know a Titan V or a V100 GPU, but you know it's really just scaling up the number of SMs. So uh, the 1050 Ti has a total of six SMs, but you know some larger, newer GPUs will have you know especially the data center ones will have you know like 80 SMs, right? And so we're just going to be la launching 16 thread blocks, and we'll go ahead and just launch each thread block with 1024 threads. And all we need to do is allocate some space on the host, right? So this will hold, hold our uh, SMIDs that we're going to copy back. We'll have, uh, you know, an array of unsigns on the device, and that's where we'll go ahead and, um, you know, we'll write our SMIDs, right? And then we'll launch our kernel, and then we'll copy it back, and then we'll print out, you know, which thread block is mapped to which SM, right? And so again, inside of our Instead of our actual kernel itself, it's very simple. We just pass in that array that we're going to store the SMIDs. All we need is a block number because only the first thread in the block actually needs to do the write. Right? We only need one thread writing this. So we'll go ahead and just use the thread ID X uh, equal to zero. So the first thread in the block will be the one that'll do this uh, this instruction. Everyone else will just immediately exit. All right? And we'll go ahead and just pass in, you know, our output. We'll go ahead and be SM, right? And that's this unsigned right here. And so we'll just get the SM ID out of this instruction. 
and then we'll go ahead and write that back to whatever the block is, right? And so in this case, we'll do it for 16 blocks, but we could scale this up as well. All right, so let's go ahead and compile this. All right, so we'll just use NVCC. We don't need to add any special flags for this. All right, dash O, SMID, and then we can go ahead and just run this, right? And if we actually do uh, CU object dump dash PTX on SMID, right? We see that here's our um, our PTX code, and we see we've got you know here's our uh, that move instruction with that SMID that we've went ahead and inlined into our kernel, and then we see some things around it. So we've got you know this predication trying to figure out okay is this a thread that we really want to. Um, that we want to you know read out the SMID uh, otherwise it goes ahead and just goes to the return down here and then it does some address calculation it goes ahead and stores that SMID you know based upon the CTA ID right and then it does the actual store down here so let's go ahead and run our code right and we see that we get a fairly consistent mapping right so it goes 0 1 2 3 uh, all the way to 5 right but we only have 6 SMs right so we're only going to get 0 through 5 let me see, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then we see 0, 2, 1, 4, right? So it's not exactly as intuitive of a, uh, you know, round robin scheduler as we might have assumed. So a round robin scheduler would go around and it would, you know, go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then loop back around and it would, you know, do this exact same thing again. But we see that it's not exactly a round robin, right? Because on a normal round robin, this would have gone, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 again, right? So, um, you know, hence why there's been works, you know, such as this one, which I'll, I'll go ahead and link below in the video, that, you know, they went through a rather exhaustive effort in figuring out, you know, what kind of scheduling is done, and, you know, why do we care about this more than just our own curiosity in building simulators into, you know, simulating the actual architectures? Well, there's been, you know, research works that have been related to, uh, you know, how thread block schedulers work and why we should be careful about what our thread block scheduler, schedulers do. Right, so this uh, this paper La Perm from a few years ago now. Um, this was in 2016, I believe at ISCA. Yeah, um, and it was a locality where scheduler for dynamic parallelism on GPUs. So later on in the you know CUDA crash course series that I have, we'll go into what you know CUDA dynamic parallelism is. But it's basically where you know there's the ability of a kernel that's already launched to launch more kernels dynamically, hence dynamic parallelism. Right, and you want to be careful about where you actually launch those kernels because there may be locality, right? From where you know, from which SM those are getting launched from, you might want to capture some of that locality um, in the caches. So, um, you know, that's the basics of you know how we do inline PTX, right? And you know, we can either do multiple individual instructions using that you know kind of ASM uh, directive, uh, but we don't have to, right? So we can actually pack as many assembler uh, or you know, assembly, PTX assembly um, instructions as we want into that, you know, same line or we could split into multiple lines. Um, but yeah, that's the basics of using inline assembly and, you know, how uh, we'd use it for reverse engineering, say, figuring out what the SM, um, you know, thread block scheduler is actually doing. Uh, so feel free to check out any of this code at github.com slash coffee before arch. That's where the code for all of these series uh, is kept, including the GPU programming one called uh, CUDA Crash Course we go over you know the more classical styles of GPU programming including things like sum reduction convolution histograms uh, matrix multiplication etc and some of the more modern GPU programming features like cooperative groups right and then um, of course for this one you know we're talking about uh, GPU micro benchmarking so all this code is of course available as well right and so here's our uh, inline PTX example so feel free to download this and play around with it let me know if you have any questions um, also, feel free to check out any of the other videos, you know, such as kind of demystifying how, you know, your PTX actually turns into SAS and maybe some differences that you find between your PTX and your SAS code. That's going to do it for today. I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you have a nice day.